One of, if not the most beautiful processes you can do in reverse glass art is acid etching. Unfortunately, it's also the most dangerous. So those of you who've been following the channel from the beginning will know that I did have an acid etching tutorial on here, but I took it down as I got more subscribers because I thought it's irresponsible having something that, you know, misuse of hydrofluoric acid can be fatal. So I just don't want it on there anymore. Since then, I've been looking for a process that can achieve the same results, but with chemicals that are easier to get your hands on and also that something that isn't fatal. So what I've come up with is a pretty cool solution, which I'm gonna go through today. But before we crack on with that, if you're a fan of reverse glass, gold leaf, sign painting, digital processes, and much more, then you're in the right place because that's all this channel's about and I try to release a video every week. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description. I reward my patrons with a different vector design every month, early access to videos, and I sort of put the odd file on here, here and there as a little bonus. So there's also a link to my Etsy shop where I'm selling some designs and the Facebook group where we're all kind of sharing ideas and helping each other out. Anyway, out of the way, let's crack on with it. So I've prepared a bit of glass. All it is is four mil thick plate glass and I've applied a vinyl stencil to the back of it. Um, people often ask, what vinyl I use, and the quick answer is whatever I can find cheapest. So this isn't anything special. All I do is I go on eBay and I type in self-adhesive vinyl roll, and whatever they've got on offer, I'll buy it. And that's all I've ever done. I don't know if other vinyl would be better, but this has served me perfectly, so I've never thought about buying anything more expensive. So the stencil's applied, and I've taken out the bits that I want to acid etch. Now, you'll notice from this that that isn't the whole design. That's because when you acid etch, it's nice to kind of leave a fine border of sort of mirror finish um, as well. It sort of makes the etch sort of pop out a bit more. So I've taken a bit I want to etch and then I'll take that fine border out as well and then kind of gild that or spray it and then carry on with it, and so on and so forth. But we'll get to that when we come to it. So on to what you're going to need. And the only thing really that I suppose is dangerous is this, and it's a cream called Armour Etch, but you can buy this off Amazon. All you have to do is prove you're 18. So it's not like hydrofluoric acid where it's extremely difficult to get hold of, rightfully so, and you have to kind of prove that you're a business and you're gonna use it for something that um, is relevant to your business. I just bought a small pot, which was 10 pound off Amazon, but you can get this bigger and I think you probably get more for your money as you go up in size. What? you would ordinarily use in the acid etching process, as I've mentioned earlier, is mica. So, let's see if you can see that. This is mica, and this process, what I'm gonna show you, if you use mica, will be exactly the same as acid etching. The reason I'm not gonna use mica is because I wanna kinda of do something that's, again, a little bit more accessible to everyone. Very similar to my glue chipping without the kind of power tools video, what I'll put a link to up here. Sometimes it's difficult to get hold of things, other times it's too expensive to get hold of them if all you want to do is kind of have a go. So mica, we know it works. If you can get hold of it and have got some, use that. If not, have a go with this method. So what I'm going to use instead of mica is green lentils. And I'm just going to change the camera angle and show you how I'm going to get started with this. So first things first, and most importantly, is safety. So I'm going to be wearing goggles, although you're not going to see me doing it, you'll just see my hands doing it and I'm going to wear rubber gloves. Now this stuff isn't like hydrofluoric acid, but it will still burn your skin if you get it on it. So gloves is a must, and if you do get it on your skin, obviously straight away rinse that under water for ages and make sure you get it all off. Right, let's get my gloves on. Right, I don't think they were my gloves, they were difficult to get on. So I've got lentils, and what I've done is I've crushed them up in a pestle and mortar. Um, you still see some big ones in there, but that doesn't really matter. What, what we want is a kind of grainy texture that the acid is going to kind of coat these flakes and then just kind of make that indentation into the glass. What I'm going to do is weigh out my water, my lentils and my armour etch. So firstly, I've got a little plastic lid. Um, you always want to make sure you're using plastic or wood for things like this when you're using acid because they tend to be acid resistant, you know. That being said, I couldn't find a wooden spatula, so I'm going to use this scalpel. Um, metal's not ideal, but I mean, it's not going to hurt me. It's just, you know, if you care for the piece of metal, you're going to mess it up. So 
there's a golden ratio for this sort of thing and it is a little bit more water than Armour Edge. Now Armour Edge, if you use this straight onto glass, will give you a kind of frosted look, a bit like sandblasted glass. And what we want to do is gild this, so kind of want to dilute this with water because if this has got a kind of grain in it which is causing that edge, I want to dilute that and then sort of coat the lentils with it. So let's get the weighing scales out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with something like 10 grams. Pretty bob on. Ooh. Okay, 10.3. Now, what I want is six parts water to five parts armor etch. So that will be, well, that'll be 12 grams, but I'll take that up to 22. So just pour that up. It might be a bit much, but I'm just going to give that a little tip out now, get that down to 22. 23 will do. So turn that off and it doesn't mix really. So you do need to give that a thorough kind of stir with your spatula. Till that's a kind of, you know, a milky, I should have used something other than a white lid so that you can see that. You might be able to see it, but I'm going to just keep stirring that until it goes milky. Which I think is about right. Now, onto the lentils. And the important bit about this, I've crushed these in a pestle and mortar. But what I don't want is the kind of powder in the bottom of that. You know, I want these to be kind of quite defined chunks. So what I'm going to do with that is just sieve what I've done and then give it a tap, a bit like kind of what you do when you're baking bread. Not that I've ever baked bread, but just tip these on here. Give that a tap. Just want to get the kind of powdery bits through. see right and that'll be all right so the mixture of water to acid is pretty you have to be relatively accurate you don't with the mixture of whatever you're putting in to sort of create the shape. What you want though, is you don't want this to be liquidy. So I'm going to start adding these in. And at the moment, that's just too runny. And what will happen if it's too runny is you'll just have too many areas where it sort of gives you a bit of a blurry etch rather than these lovely sort of stifled effects. So what you really want is, you know, quite a thick, paste where it's just lentils coated in um, in your mixture rather than you know lentils floating in it. That's still too runny. That is looking more like it you know like a sort of thick paste there's still a bit of liquid in there but you know, really, I'm just gonna, there's a tiny bit left, so I'm just going to put the last of it in. But that is, that's looking quite good. So let's just pop that last bit in. Ooh. Now you don't have to grind these up in a pestle and mortar either. Now I'm doing it because the design I've got is on a small bit of paper and it's on a small bit of glass and it's also quite intricate. But, you know, if you're doing this on a big bit of glass, you know, the lentils will give a really nice kind of golf ball stipple. So I'd probably just leave them as they are for that. But, hmm, that is looking pretty good. So let's get that applied. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is apply this over the piece and make sure that it covers all of the areas that are exposed. 
So, start. We'll pattern this on. And you can be really kind of haphazard with this, you know, you've got to be accurate. Ooh. Okay, so from the point I applied the last little bit, I set a timer for 35 minutes and that'll be up in a minute. So what I'm gonna do once that buzzer goes is take this into the toilet. I'm gonna to scrape all of this off in the toilet and flush it a couple of times. Then I'm gonna rinse the glass with a bit of water. I won't film that bit because who wants to see me flushing stuff down the toilet. So we'll come back once that's all off and looking nice and kind of stifled. Okay, so giving that a rinse and this is our mottled effect. Now I'm not sure how visible that is through here, but what I'm going to do now is remove the kind of little edging bits to create the bright lines around the etched areas and then you will see that much clearer. So I'm just going to switch that to a time lapse now, get those removed and then show you the result. Okay, so here it is. And again, I'm still not quite sure whether you'll be able to see the sort of detail now it's got the bright lines on it. But the reason I'm out in the shed is I'm gonna finish this off using techniques that I've covered in previous videos. So I'll put a link to them up here, but I'll show this in a time-lapse and sort of describe it now. Basically what I'm gonna do is the bits that I've got exposed now, I'm gonna spray with Krylon looking glass. For those that don't know, that's like a mirror effect spray paint. Um, I've covered that in a previous video and you can have it so it gives you a mirror effect and you can also have it so you can produce an antique mirror effect. What I'm gonna do is on the letters, I'm gonna go for mirror. Then I'm gonna take out some of the other bits and spray it black. And then this sort of area around the edge was gonna be left over. I'm gonna do that as an antique mirror. So I'm just gonna switch the camera now, do the rest in a time-lapse and then see how it looks at the end. Okay. And here it is, <coughs> all finished. And I think for a process where you can get all of the necessary ingredients off Amazon for around about 10 pound, this is pretty impressive. Like I said before, lentils are just the kind of means to an end. And I use those because they're something that um, anyone can get hold of in abundance for not a lot of money, but it will work with mica. I'd love to see whatever other people come up with in terms of what else will work with it, because you know there's so many different unique patterns that can be made from different substances. So pretty much anything acid resistant is going to form a pattern on the glass. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and click the little thumbs up icon. And please share it with anyone else who you think might enjoy it. So till next time, cheers.